Hello everyone. I hope you are well and walking in the love and favor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, wherever you are. I want to talk about the two faces of life. And when I say the two faces, I mean the two schools of thought or the two sides. Think of it as the two sides of a coin, right? More like decisions, options. Before I started making this video, just moments before I started recording, I had this picture, this revelation. You know, God was showing me this illustration that I found quite profound. And he was like, If you got a pair of binoculars and give them to a child and an adult, you give each a pair, and they're both standing on, on top of a building or a hill, a raised place, right? The adult will look for landmarks, you know, places they know. And once they see all the places they know, I'll be like, what? A minute? Oh, that building. Oh, that's where. Oh, oh. And they're done. A child will be so curious. They might even spend a whole day looking through that pair of binoculars. It's because of this thing the kids have children have this is spirit this is innocence they do not think they know adults we think we know we don't want, we don't want our time wasted we don't want anybody to bother us we don't want anything to go wrong we want things to be done a particular way well, kids don't, kids don't mind that. As long as they have what they need. Sorry about that. They're good. So, this child will end up noticing a few things with the binoculars, you know. They'll look on the street or they see people fight. They'll look at a strange bird. They'll look at, they'll start observing strange things. Which takes, which takes me back to the scripture where Jesus said that be like the children, be like the little children, be like the little children. I find that quite profound. But so many times um, you might say, hey, uh, I don't get revelations from, of the Bible. I have friends who have told me that. I have people I fellowship with that have told me that. I do not get... Um, Revelations of the Bible, how do you do it? The thing is, you observe like a child. You be crazy about it. Go all in. Do not have this kind of uh, program. Because God, you can't make a program with God. He's, God is something else. You just avail yourself. You look through with what, with what you have been given. To be active with it. Then you will be able to observe, to see, to receive these revelations from God. And for the most part, all of us adults, we are like, ah, I... I have a program, I'm busy, I'm not going to pray today. Uh, I'm sorry, I won't be available uh, because I have plans. Yeah, people do that. You know? But what we forget is that the more you are busy for God, 
you only get that which you avail yourself to. The deeper you search, the deeper you will get. It's like going into a tunnel, into into a, into the mines. The deeper you go, the, the higher chances you have to find these minerals, these crystals, this gold or whatever. The deeper you dig, you find the good stuff, you know. It's not always it's not always on the surface. And what happens down there, you get suffocated. You start losing your mind. Deep in the tunnels. You get fears of these tunnels of, of you know, of these uh, tunnels. The, the soil covering you, you know, falling on you. You get all these worries, all these fears. But because you know you you want to get these minerals and get money, get a good life, you keep going deep and deep and deep because you know your family needs to feed. You keep going deep. If that's how we searched for God, we will be very far. Then there's the other side of the adult. They will look at the landmarks, you know, the binoculars. They, they will look at the landmarks they know. And after looking at the landmarks, they locate them in, in the binoculars. They'll be like, ah, oh, okay. And they're done. They move on with their lives. Thinking that we know we only want to seek God at our own conveniency, at, you know, our own time, at our own, you know, It is sad, but it also has its you know, I mean, you reap what you sow. That, that that's the thing, you reap what you sow. And with God I have seen that to be so true. With God you only reap what you sow. I'm not here to make anybody feel guilty or bad and um not here to tell you that hey you're not suck you're not searching you're not seeking but hear me out God works in mysterious ways the more you throw yourself out there the more you're going to keep encountering God in amazing ways. These people I talk to, and they give you this knowledge. And I'm like, wow. And they give you very vital information. And you're like, oh my God. If I wasn't speaking to this person, if I hadn't spoken to this person, I wouldn't know this. You know? And, and it's... You know, one of those life and death kind of things, you know? And you're like, oh my God. This is so profound, you know? I don't even know how to explain that. But I have had such moments and I'm like, oh my God. So it takes me to a place of thinking, wow, how, how much do we miss out on by closing up ourselves, you know, confining ourselves in our, in our comfort. And it's so funny that our comfort is not comfortable because people can still complain. They can be like, oh, I spend my weekends at home. I read the word of God. And the word of God is boring. It's because the word of God is not active in us for the most part. The word of God becomes interesting when you start seeing things manifest. Yo, that is so amazing. I, I would love everybody to experience that because it is so, so amazing when you see this puzzle 
this grand puzzle of the word of God manifest right before you. You see people get delivered. You see God revealing amazing and deep things to you. You're like, wow, this is amazing. I mean, I can't honestly say it any better. I can't honestly say it any better. But there goes the two faces of life. You choose. The choice is always ours. There's a man that might sell his soul for riches and gain. And another will look at that man as a fool. And the thing is that if you sat down and reasoned with that man why they sold their soul, why they had to do all that. If you give them time and they reason with you straight from the heart, if you had the spirit of God or something, you would understand why they did what they did. You'd sympathize. Because you see a thing about life. Life is about listening. You, you listen to something and you have faith in it. If somebody that has gained things, good things from Satan comes and talks to you about Satan's goodness. They will speak amazing things about Satan and you they'll make you see the good side of Satan. Why? Because you have given them your time. You have given them your ears to listen. The Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 17, that faith cometh by hearing. Hearing the word of God. It pauses. And it's so interesting that the Bible pauses there. It says that faith cometh by hearing. And it pauses. But in the context Paul was speaking, he said that faith cometh by hearing the word of God. I want you to go back and read that verse, Romans chapter 10, verse 17. In everything you hear, you start having faith in it. You start believing, you will get this confidence in it. If you knew nothing about cryptocurrency, and somebody started coming, speaking to you about cryptocurrency, and they make you believe it's the future, if you give them time to listen and listen to them, you will start believing that stuff. But if you don't give it time like me, you'll never have faith in it. The more you avail yourself to something, the more you become it. Next thing you know, you're, you're that guy that preaches cryptocurrency all over the place. Same as us who have met Christ and we are preaching him all over the place. You know, because we have become, we have become this Christ, <laughs> this word that we listen to. And um, I mean, it's humbling. But even if it's humbling, you have to be careful with the things you avail yourself to. 
the time you give certain things, certain people, the content you watch, the things you listen to, you will become them. <clears throat> I remember um, somebody was telling me, a sister-in-law, I think, she was telling me, Um, that out of the blue they were getting these strange attacks, you know, yearnings, um, cravings, you know, of the flesh. And though they were like, I was wondering where these things were coming from. And it took me back to a place where I also experienced the same. I was reading the word of God. I was praying. I honestly wasn't doing anything wrong. I wasn't smoking. I wasn't drinking. I wasn't, I wasn't even around people that influenced my character. But out of the blue, I started feeling this urge to smoke. could feel this urge to smoke and I prayed to God I said God what's happening I thought I'm a Christian why am I feeling these strange urges to smoke and you know because out of the blue I felt like smoking I felt like I missed a cigarette I felt like it's a cigarette I needed to save my life Yo, I asked God about, about it and he started revealing amazing things, surprising things. He was telling me that you are having these urges because of the music you're listening to. Like how so? And he tells me that the music you're listening to You are receiving the spirit behind the artist. I was like, wow, that is strange. So I go and listen to this artist. She's a female. And I watch some of the videos that I had never seen. Well, I never even bothered watching any of the videos. It was the music I really cared for. As I'm watching the videos, I see her lifestyle in the videos. The person she is in the video... And I'm like, wow. She was smoking. Um, you know, delving in uh, sexual explicit stuff. And right shortly after that, I also started feeling, you know, these uh, sexual urges. And God tell, tells me, it's the stuff you're listening to. I want to tell you something. When I cut out that music, that sound, I never got those urges again. And I can't lie to you. I prayed to God that, hey God, anytime it comes to smoke, cigarettes and stuff, let it, let it stink. Every time I, I smell it, let it smell so bad to me. Uh, to this day, when I smell cigarettes and smoke, cigarette smoke, it makes me sick to the, you know, to the stomach. I, I feel like I want to throw up when I smell it. And that's something I used to love. I can imagine. And these are some of the things that make me realize that, hey, and understand the word of God when he says that, he will make us new creations. I now understand what that means totally. A person who used to love smoking. Like, yo. And then now you don't even like, you hate the smoke. It even makes you feel sick. That is truly recreation. The thing about Christianity that we do not know is 
There is your truth. Like we say, there is two sides of a coin. There is your truth. And there is the truth of God. Humbling yourself and say, this truth of mine or this template of life that I grew up knowing or that I'm accustomed to, let me put it aside and listen to what you have to offer God. And your prayer life, it rotates around that. Everything comes from that direction. I'm telling you, you will be a winner. Like, your daily life has to be... You pray according to your daily life. Many people think that to praise, you go out and say, you pray all these words. Prayer is simply dialogue with God. You feel a complication. You get on your knees, you ask God, Lord, what is happening? I'm feeling this. And after you pray, you wait to listen. And what, what, this is how you listen to the voice of God. When you're thinking about a situation, let's say it's employment, and you're not employed, you've been struggling for six months, you're praying every day. Every time you pray to God, try to listen back. And as you listen back, let your mind run through the word of God, the Bible. You search, it's like you're searching uh, the internet. You're searching for where the, the Bible talks about blessings, anything related to your situation, perhaps it's work, provision. You run to all these places. It's like you're reminding God of his promises. You're like, but God, but you said this, but you said that. You don't have to, to, to remember the exact address. All you have to remember is the word, the promise. I'm telling you the Spirit of God will speak back. But for the most part, people don't read the Bible and they want to speak to the Holy Spirit. They expect Him to speak. People do not know the word of God. And they want the Holy Spirit to speak to them just like that. He can speak to you. He can speak to you, it's possible. But I would advise that you also read the word. At least that's how it happens to me. Even when it comes to revelation, God will only reveal that which you are seeking. He won't just come out of the blue. Well, he can do that also because he does it to me. He can reveal things that I've not even asked or even thought about. He's that merciful. He's that loving. He can do that because he's a friend. And, yeah, people have to go to that kind of place. But, hey, how many truly want to experience that? How many people really want to give God that time? You know, benefit of the doubt. And say, hey, uh, I believe in this God thing. Uh, let me give it a chance. How many people really are willing to do that uh, I honestly don't know many that are looking forward to that but uh, all in all the thing is that the only face of God that the only face that we have to follow is the face of God. The only side of the coin that matters is that of God. The one that gives you, takes you to that place of integrity whereby when you are alone, you will still remain that same person. That th there will be no need for you please anyone worry about this worry about that the, 
you just simply decide to see God, God alone. That's what matters at the end of the day. That, that is the only thing that truly matters at the end of the day. But I wish that, you know, everybody could, you know, get to that place and they experience God in his, in his fullest form. I mean, this thing is a journey. You can't just know God in one day. It's a journey. You experience something today, you experience something tomorrow, and it just keeps happening like that. You know? And it's a beautiful thing how these things unfold when you finally see the hand of God in your life. It's... It's just so amazing. It's it's a very beautiful thing to see. You always see the word, the love of God in your life. I pray, I pray for that for everyone. I pray that you all experience it because it's a very beautiful feeling. Yeah, so I think that's all I can say today. I just pray that you experience that, that love of God. That many people yearn to, to experience, that many people haven't gotten a chance to experience. I pray that you experience it. But remember, life has two faces. Uh, there's the face of the world, there's the face of God. Whose face are you going to take? That is something you always have to ask yourself. You know, who are you going to listen to? Is it God? Is it the world? You know, because the world has, the world really speaks a lot. The world defends its ways. It loves its ways so much. Are you going to love the world's ways too? Or you're going to humble yourself and say, God, I, I, I know nothing, but I'm willing to learn. Teach me. Teach me about you. Are you going to do that? Or, you know, that's what life is all about. Because right now, what you see in the world, you're guys i can tell you that we are really living in the last in the very 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 last of days i mean it doesn't matter if people believe it or not i see it i see it and that's what matters that you see it. I hope that um, you experience the love of God wherever you are and that you grow deeper in it. And that you're never swayed from the truth. You know, but you stay under the ark of protection of, of the hand of God. That nobody can snatch you out of it. Make that prayer every day. Because where the world is heading, it's, it's going to be hard. It's, it's going to take miracles for people to stay in salvation. Temptations are going to keep growing. And decision making is going to become very hard. Stick standing and sticking to God. And I pray that you're strong enough, you know, to stand in, in the times of trial. So God bless you.